Hello and welcome to Eco Girl in a Modern World. My name is Shelley and my channel is dedicated to talking about ways to be more environmentally friendly in a modern context. Uh, this week I was going to change gears and talk about kind of a, another important subject that comes up right before the start of summer. Uh, the official f first day of summer isn't until June 23rd, but by, by the beginning of June, um, it does start to get really hot, especially uh, contingent on where you are in the world. And um, with global warming, um, the summer season does start earlier now. It, it tends to get pretty hot pretty quickly, and you do see some kind of erratic temperatures. I can say that in the last, you know, last two weeks alone, it, we've had several really unnormally, unusually hot days and then it goes straight into cooler, more normal temperature days for the beginning of summer, um, plus a lot of storms, a lot of high winds and things like that, which is of course all contributed to global warming. But uh, today I wanted to talk about um, a little bit of an important subject, which is water, um, in particularly reservoirs and aquifers. Res reservoirs and aquifers are very important because of course they are the source of, um, of our fresh water. Um, as if you know, if you are familiar, um, you cannot. There is currently no way to desalinize to take the salt out of seawater. Um, if we could do that, we would probably have a, an endless, unlimited supply of, of water to use, um, even even with the pollution that we put into our oceans, which is not good. But um, we have not found that solution yet, so therefore we do not um, have the ocean as a source of drinking water that is fresh. So you've, you've probably heard of water tables and fresh water. Um, those are the resources of water that are deep in the earth that we pull through wells or through um, you know, the, the water sanitary commissions that give you your public water um, you know, and what happens is we pull a lot of reserves from that that source. So, um, what? Uh, so it makes that that water source is a very important thing. Um, and I'm going to post a few videos below that talk about how aquifers work. Uh, basically, aquifers are the actual holding of the water in the earth, in the ground, and it, it really is quite fascinating. Um, when when water seeps through the ground, it goes through sedi uh, sediment and um, silt and salt stock and it kind of acts like a purification process. It's a very natural and, you know, age old way that the, the, the earth kind of filters out water. And it's kind of fascinating. Honestly, you can you can look up videos here on YouTube on how water is purified. Um, I won't go into detail on it in this video. Maybe we'll do another video that talks about it. But um, even when you look at something like your Brita water filter, or you'll notice that the filter itself seems to have kind of like almost a coal-like stone in the center. Um, that, that And that is kind of like the natural elements that are deep in the earth Earth that aquifers use to purify water. But basically, uh, an aquifer can swell, it can get bigger when it's when there's been more rain, um, and get kind of full, get, get kind of, you know, sloshing around and over overextended. Um, or an oh, aquifer can also start to go dry, and that is when you've probably heard of drought or when, um, when there hasn't been as much rain as there is normally. And this is in a very dangerous kind of balance, right? Because, you know, while having an, an overfull aquifer might make it where you have too much water and, and it makes it harder, it makes it takes longer for the, the natural system to actually filter and get uh, make the water clean again, while um, an underabundance is the opposite where um, a, a water source can start to go dry. And that's the scary scenario because once you have used up all of your water reserves, if you do let that 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 you know source of fresh water go dead, so to speak, then we're in real trouble. You know, so so this ties into water conservation and and not wasting water, which we'll talk about a little bit in this video. But aquifers are very fascinating, and I actually uh, I got fast I got even more interested in them after taking my environmental course last year. 
um, you probably heard me talk about it. Um, I talked about um, rain barrels. One of um, one of the final projects I did for school was talking about how to collect rainwater, where. Um, and I actually looked, uh, it was interesting, I looked at some graphs in my area of, of how full the water uh, our aquifers were getting after we, we had had some kind of torrential rains, which is another side effect of really, um, you know, climate change of, 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 of weather that's kind of up and down and not normal. But um, now, so aquifers uh, are the water that is stored in, in the belly of the earth. Um, they are very important, um, and I'm going to post a few videos below that talk about first off how aquifers work because they are, it's a little bit tricky. Um, when you think about it, it's like you think, oh, okay, if I own the land in which an aquifer is on, then the aquifer is mine. Aquifers don't work that way. Water, you know, if you've ever if you've ever planted a plant, like a house plant, if you've ever put rocks in the bottom of that plant pot, and then you know everything seeps down, you notice that you know, and it's it's a it's a, a, a fact, um, a, a geophysical fact as well, that water always sinks to its lowest point. And that can be anywhere. It can flow away from the source of where the water, where the rain came down, and it can really dissipate. It can really move, and you know, and water can can carve out a mountain. It can it can eat away at rock at rock with constant movement. So um, there's a lot of factors that go into it, including how tightly packed the, the you know, the, the sediment and the silt is that, that the water's filtering through. Um, if there's more spaces between the rock, then sometimes the water can build up a little bit more or get filtered a little bit more. But our main goal is that, you know, that, you know, it's a, it's a natural process, so you can't control it, but we do want to monitor it to make sure that it is it is having a chance to filter our rain water and that we're not depleting it unnecessarily now if an aquifer is the water that's stored underneath the ground in the in the earth um, reservoirs are the water that you see above ground and sometimes reservoirs can you know be the the kind of like the lake top of of where the aquifer is but reservoirs are very important as well um, because what reservoirs are wonderful because they usually they're a visual you know uh, um, of of how much water we're using also reservoirs are important because on the surface they look like oh like a lake right and um you know they just look like a pretty lake that you could walk around but in, in reality um it's it's not something that you want to fish in or throw your garbage in or go swimming in because that is just again it's the surface of of the aquifer or it's the surface um the open area of the top of the the filtration the natural filtration that the earth does to give us clean uh drinking water um, and the water that we use in our daily life and it, believe it or not, a, a very small percentage of the, I don't have the exact statistic, but a very small percentage of the entire uh, surface of the earth is, I think it's like 3%, is actual drinking water. And that's the water that we recycle. You know, we, 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 we use it, we take it from an aquifer, you know, we use it, and then we put it through water filtration plants to use again. But that's also another reason that we want to keep it very clean, and that's why concerns, you know, it's the water that we use for agriculture aggregation farms if you're using pesticides if you're using you know um, you know fertilizers or things and and later when we get into food quality there are a lot of new fertilizers that are coming out that are just do not sound good um, you know it's it's causing I really do think it's causing health problems in people and I think it, you know just like you saw in the PFAS video that I did um, there are forever chemicals if we don't know exactly how a chemical works and it gets into our drinking water it can be permanent and cannot it might be very difficult to get back out so um, so that's what we want to talk about today um, another thing that inspired this video is that the other day I went on a on a tour of, of, a, of a building that was dedicated to be 
a green space to uh, the city, a city that I live near, and um, they did have a reservoir um, called um, Lake Montebello, and it was really a beautiful lake, and couldn't I couldn't walk completely around it, but there were definitely signs that say, you know, this is this is our this is a wet reservoir. Please treat it with respect, and there there were fences around it, but it was just lovely. It's like you know, reservoirs can be not only a source of our drinking water, but they can also be w w green spaces, like walking spaces, um, that you can almost treat like a lake. And um, and I did. I saw it was a beautiful day, and I saw everybody walking around, and it was just kind of like, it's. I always just feel like these these kind of anchors of nature really go a long way to, um, you know, feeling your connection with the earth because we are not apart, you know, we are not apart from nature, we are a part of nature. And when you actually see, hey, that's the, you know, that's what gives me all my drinking water, it, it, it builds a connection with it. But yes, but reservoirs and uh, aquifers are very, very important. And especially we go into summer and especially when it's been, you know, hotter for longer, you know, the, the hot season has been starting earlier and then staying, you know, lingering longer. You know, we want to take, uh, we want to think about where our water gets filtrated naturally and how to be careful and, you know, how to be mindful of it in a modern context, right? Now, um, first off, uh, one of the largest, uh, another, I'll post another video down below. Another way that you can kind of wrap your head around it is you can kind of see how other countries and how our own country uh, uses these, these reservoirs. Um, in the United States, the largest reservoir is called um, a, a lake, I think it's called Lake Mead, and that is the largest natural reservoir. And again, it has, um, it has, it is an aquifer, but the top of it is a reservoir, so you can kind of visual, you can see it. Um, you know, NASA takes images of it all the time, where if the lake starts to recede, that's an indicating indication that oh my goodness, our water table is decreasing, right? It's it, we're using more water than what it is accumulating, and that's danger, real. real you know that's danger will Robinson we don't want to we want to be in balance with the amount of water that we're using and it kind of gives you a visual as to whether or not you need to put out a drought a drought alert you know let people know okay we need to reserve water no, we should be doing that anyway <laughs> um, the other thing another video that I'm gonna post down below that's really a, a great way to see how water is used is the Panama Canal Panama Canal is the, um, you know, is the connector. It was the way, it's the way that we uh, ship goods currently, you know, without having to sail around, you know, the, the entire tip of South America. You know, if you need to get goods from the, you know, east coast of America to the west coast of America, you can go through the canal. Now, the canal is exactly that. It is a channel. And the way that it works is that boats are floated using waters from aquifers so the the water that floods the canal and lifts the boats to put them through the channel is exactly what we're talking about reservoirs and aquifers um, but it's it's a great watch there's two videos there um, there's also a video that's talking about how the Panama Canal is probably going to be discontinued soon we will probably not use it anymore for um, a lot of different reasons including water conservation but also it's you know the 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 economy of all of South America is going to be changing probably in the next 20 to 30 years so we can get away from using these kind of water intensive channels um, for the benefit of, of the residents who live there and you know and the entire continent right you know we just we're going to be evolving in the way that we ship things and if you watch my cargo video <laughs> Ooh, the change is coming change is coming but um yes yeah, seeing how the Panama Canal works is it because it does it pulls it's it's a main source of economy because it it's what ships things you know for the entire you know for several several continents you know several countries many countries but it is also taxing on the water supply for the people who live there so that's where you can kind of get an idea of you know having to pull all this water so you know going into it and looking at it if if you live in the united states we are kind of the worst offenders for it 
you know, um, as, as the start of summer comes, you want to wash your car and you want to, you're showering more. And, you know, uh, there's, there's, um, I, I learned this when I was taking my class as well. Um, you know, the amount of water that it takes to flush a toilet, <laughs> the amount of water that you use when you wash a, one load of laundry, right? Um, water efficient toilets, um, use only four, every single time you flush a toilet, um, a water efficient toilet will use four but um, a non-water efficient toilet uses 20 gallons of water. 20 gallons. When you think about it... Okay. okay, if you've gone to the grocery store and carried home a one gallon bottle of water, like a gallon, like you think of a gallon of milk, how heavy that is. 20 of those just to flush, you know? And if you have a water efficient toilet, good for you, um, 14. Right, and actually, I like I kind of like going places when they have the two buttons that have one button that says, you know, um, if it's just liquid waste versus, you know, if you do a number two, then it needs more water to flush. I like those toilets too because I think it even uses for liquid waste. I think it uses even less than 14 gallons. So that's what we're talking about. You know, don't don't use you know, do you need to use $20 for your number one, uh, $20, I'm sorry, 20 gallons of water just for your number one, right? Um, you know, that's, that seems kind of crazy, right? And I mean, when you think about it, you know, um, we just, we don't want to be filtering out water necess unnecessarily, especially when it's going to start to get dry and start to dry out our aquifers, right? Um, and, and I'm becoming very mindful with the, the laundry too. Um, I, I try not to, I try to make it full loads. Um, there's a lot of washers that, you know, have, will show you how much water they're using. Um, unfortunately, on my washer, there's only one setting that's, no, it's called normal, right? That, um, that uses, that it, act, this, there's an actual sensor that says, okay, if there's less clothes in the, in the barrel, don't fill it, don't fill up the drum entirely. But I'm, I'm kind of torn because there's a delicate cycle. And, you know, when you run things on delicate, it's not always a full load. It might be a couple of silk shirts you know very but it's still filling a full you know and I think I think it's something like 36 gallons of water you know to fill up a, a washing machine um, you know I was actually driving out of my complex this morning and I saw saw my neighbors um, washing their car and um, and they, they were actually doing it kind of the good way they just had like a buck one bucket of soapy water what bucket of clean water that's great, you know, one couple, you know, two of those buckets, probably like three gallons of water each, t a total of six gallons to wipe down their car. If you go to a car wash, I think it's like 26 gallons uh, or 40, no, I'm sorry, if you go to a car wash, I think it's like 40 to 100 gallons of water, which is a lot. If you wash, m normally if you use a hose in your driveway, I think it's like 26 to 40 or 50 gallons, I'll put the statistic up. But it's a lot of water, it's a lot of water, right? And if and when we think about it, it's like, okay, if and I always say this all the time, if you had to drink, if you you know, if you, if if we had to filter out our own, if, if every household had to filter out their own water um, to drink it, you know, and, and think of third world, you know, think of third world countries, they actually have this plate, they really do, they have to go to a well. And sometimes wells can go dry, it's like or, or be contaminated with pollutants from you know from things seeping into the ground from the neighboring farms from the neighboring you know facilities and you know and and an uh, industry you know so this is a very important thing but um i i just encourage you you know the the best thing that you can do is and i know it seems it feels very gloom and doom but um the best thing that you can do is be mindful you know, as we're going into the, it's starting to heat up, as we're going into the summer season, really think about how much water that you're using. You know, do you really need to use that much? Do you have to, to, to put your car through the Prima wash? Or can you really just wash it in your own driveway with two buckets, one soapy, one clear of water to to not have to use so much of, the, of this press, precious resource? Um, another example, and just to, you know, throw it out there, is you hear this all the time in, um, and especially now that summer is kicking up in the Midwest all the way out to California there are drought warnings all the time you know the the amount of you know population plus how dry it gets in that region of the of the United States 
it becomes a very serious problem. And um, I think it was two years ago, and this is not to, I know I kind of knock the Kardashians on this channel a lot. The two of the Kardashians did get called out for this. Um, they used over, a, there was a drought you know, everybody was rationed to say, look, conserve water, don't use it unnecessarily. And, um, and two of the Kardashian sisters used more than 150%. And it was for frivolous stuff, like just watering your lawn or, you know, um, I'm sorry, I, I always think of that scene in um, the Miley Cyrus video, Flowers, when the sprinklers come on and she has that perfectly manicured lawn that has all the fertilizer on it. Now, personally, I'm not, I'm not knocking Miley Cyrus either. She, pers she, it ha went through a devastating fire, you know, California fire that burnt down her house. So I don't think I don't think her video is a reflection of her her views on water conservation. I think she's actually very more a lot more mindful. And um and but it was just funny, you know, the Kardashians who have been called out on several things, including you know, you know, taking a taking a, a, a the, the the condor, you know, taking a fast plane just to get from one side of LA to the other side of LA, which is very, you know, gas intensive and wasteful and co2 intensive but they did they have been called out for water conservation as well and again you know that's it's it's even more important in california because you do have wildfires it's a lot more than just okay you know we're using more the other thing is that that water that you're using just to spray your grass or to fill your pool and I, there was a really offhanded comment where she was like, I don't even swim in that pool. And I'm like, yes, I'm sure that's one of your 12 pools that you don't swim in. Why don't you empty it and not use it if it's not in use? You know, don't fill it up or waste water. Don't waste water. Because that's more than just, you know, you watering your lawn. You, you watering your lawn to do something frivolous like that is taking away drinking water. And, you know, and, and you know there are other people who are really going without in order for you to do, for it to be, so you know um uh, allowed on the other side it's 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 wasteful and it's not fair um but it was definitely not not just the kardashians um uh, i think sylvester stallone got cited i think kevin hart got cited so there's a lot of celebrities and goodness knows who knows it could be your it could be their california home they might not even you know they the, a lot of celebrities own multiple properties they were probably not even home when it happened um or they had their sprinklers set on automatic or some something like that you know this isn't to to, to drag anyone it's just you got to take those citations seriously because um, it can lead to wildfires, it can lead to burning, it can lead to, um, you know, really, really bad droughts. And, and it's a serious thing. It's a serious thing. You got to take it seriously. Um, the other thing is that, you know, in the same vein of LA, half the reason why the water is so stressed or the water table is so uh, taxed is because of the population. You have large populations. The other thing is um, in, in that wasteful side, you do have these large properties, which I talk about all the time in this channel. You have, you know, you know, seven, you know, 8,000 square foot single family homes in which maybe one celebrity and they're you know they're uh, may, they may have kids but you know pretty much one adult or two adults live in that property but yet think of how much water it takes to maintain it they they probably have 12 bathrooms you know they have bars they have pools they have you know sprinklers and you know the the amount of population you know just the sheer amount of water that's being pulled for one property that's really only serving two people then you have other and and on the other side of the coin too if you have big high rises or a really condensed property that's a lot of water being pulled too and we don't have you know there's a missing middle there's no integrated middle so when you start overbuilding in an area that's a danger too and i'm going to post a really great video there is a way that we can get around that especially as we are trying to look towards more missing middle or you know building middle class homes um, there's a great video that talks about that where they they start with where the aquifers are that's you begin there you say okay where are the water reserves for the people who are going to be living in this square footage and let's limit it only this many people can live in this square because that's what the water table will support see that's the smart way right that's the smart way and it was actually a great video because it talks about how to have like a strip of commerce that is mixed use and then um, you know then duplexes and then cottage courts and then townhomes and then single-family homes it serves everyone 
and you are you've got the most population that you can have without being a detriment to the natural balance of the water table that's there but it's a fantastic video I think it's called streetwise uh, I'll put it below watch it it's a great watch it's actually very inspirational but you know and again not to knock celebrities but you know this is where we get into you know and and honestly to smack our own hand here and this is the last thing you know i you know i i start to get mindful about that you know after taking yeah i took my environmental course and that really opened my eyes but you know i am getting mindful of you know if i'm doing a partial load of laundry that's unnecessary i think about how many times i'm flushing my toilet right you know how many gallons goes into that i think about you know if i'm leaving my water on if I'm taking a really long shower is that necessary especially as we start to get into these hot months and when especially when you notice that there's been drought and not a lot of rainfall you in a mon you know modern girl modern world you can you're you're a mindful human being before before they have to before your government has to tell you to reserve water you can observe outside your window okay it's been three weeks we haven't had a rain do I really need to be using this much water we're probably getting it's been very hot you know we're probably approaching drought conditions at this point let me let me cut back so we don't get there prematurely and um, and you can do that in several different ways. We mentioned a few already. You know, don't don't go to the drive. You know, don't go through. Take your car through the car wash if you don't have to. If you're able, if you're able-bodied and you can do it with less water, great. Um, you know, if you do have to, you know, rinse it off in your own driveway. You know, turn off the water once you're done. Just just be mindful. It's like it's like you know, letting the water run when you're brushing your teeth. Just think about it and say, oh, okay, I'm brushing my teeth. I don't need the water to be on right now. That goes a long way. The other thing is make sure your equipment if you do you know love to keep your lawn up uh, I highly encourage looking at the fertilizers that you use please make sure that there's no nitrogen runoff um, you know because that contaminates water tables but other than that just make sure your equipment is working um, it is I saw an EPA statistic that said just one you know if you have sprinklers in your lawn one lawn sprinkler that's broken can waste up to 25 thousand gallons you know those those gallons we were talking about of water and over the course of six months so even though something just seems like a little drip a leaky faucet a running toilet get that fixed because that also goes a long way to restoring our water balance and the last thing I encourage you to do is look at your, it's, it's a matter of public record for you to see the aquifer that serves your area. So, and I, I you know, it, it was kind of, you know, when I was looking at the statistics for our aquifer, my area, it was foreign to me. I was like, okay, what am, what am I looking at? But, you know, the, the you know, the, the, the Department of Public Works, they usually color code it. They show you what the, you know, they, they keep it very, they keep it very layman's terms where you can try to understand it. And it is good to know. Um, you know, the other thing is I, up until the me taking the class, I didn't know where my aquifer was, which is really kind of made me feel kind of ignorant. I'm like, wow, you know, we live in this modern age where you can just turn on a tap and have water. That is, that is being in paradise, guys. I mean, that is really, that is a privileged life to be able to have that. So to know where that comes from, to know where we're at with it, is it, is it swollen from too much rain? Is it, is it approaching drought? Is it in a good balance? Um, what kind of chemicals have they been fi finding in it? You know, have we been farming sustainably near our water resources and, and how, how your state and county manages it? Um, so I do encourage you, if, if that's something, you know, after watching this video, please check that out. You know, it, it, it's kind of boring, but it's, it's me, I think it's, in, I think it's interesting. And I think it's a way that you can st start on your, um, your eco journey to understand the way that you, your, you interact with the resources, the natural resources that are available to you. Well, I hope this was an entertaining video. I, I know it went a little bit long. Um, we've been talking a lot about uh, different things, including repair and you know uh, and natural resources and trophic levels. I will try to do a kind of a more fashion video or another kind of more entertainment-based one soon. Um, I, there's a lot of media that's been going on, so I might do another like eco outfit of the day. Um, so we'll we'll talk about that, and I'll try to do that the next video just to give us a break 
break from all this serious stuff. But I thank you so much for joining me. If you like my content, I would be very honored if you would like, comment, and subscribe. And if not, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.